Ahoy, my friends, Ryder here, and welcome back to another Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis video. Today, I'm going to be going over two different things. The first is a data mine revealing a new select on your wishlist banner, so I'm going to quickly go over that. The second thing that I'm going to be getting into is Matt had a new weapon come out on the Zack banner. Everyone's seen it. It's called the Centipede. I'm going to show you it right here. And... It's been kind of up in the air, at least for me, as to how this weapon is going to be healing. Is it going to be healing based off, because it says here, restores up to 59% of their healing potency, right? So today I'm going to be testing this. I did pull two copies of the Centipede when I pulled on Zack's banner. So I'm going to be taking him into a fight against Very Hard Bahamut. And I'm going to be testing to see if this weapon truly is healing off the healing potency of your team or if it's actually healing off Matt's healing potency himself. All right, so before I get into this, I'm going to jump down here to the Discord where, as you guys can see, we have a Final Fantasy VII Rebirth launch special pick draw. Five star weapons selected on the wish list will appear. We've had one of these before, I think right before Christmas, we got one of these banners where. The only five stars that appear when you pull on this are only from your wish list. Uh, this can be a really helpful banner. However, I will advise some caution with this because the six month anniversary for Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis is literally right around the corner. I think we have like 10 days left for it. And I think that at this point, it's better to just wait. It's likely that since re the Rebirth crossover was kind of small, now that I'm seeing this, I'm starting to think that maybe there isn't going to be another Rebirth crossover banner. And I'm just like, ugh, why? They could have given us a Cloud Sephiroth banner. You know, I, I think the Tifa Guide gloves and the Cowgirl costume are, are awesome, right? And the Red 13 costume is also awesome, but... No weapon for Red 13, a single banner, I don't know. It just feels like uh, feels like it could have been a little bit more. But anyways, that leads me to believe that the six-month anniversary banners are going to be where they kind of pick up um, what they left off right here. So I think wait to see what the six-month banners are, you know, unless there's absolutely all five things on your wish list that you totally need then maybe but even then i still unless only if you have like a surplus of crystals um other than that here's another picture for it five star weapons selected on the wish list will appear and then it looks like we're getting another launch pack here to celebrate final fantasy 7 rebirth launching and it looks like a cloud and zach five star ticket it's probably going to be 300 paid all right, so that is going to conclude the data mine. That being said, let's go test out Matt. I'm going to be running him in a kind of a interesting way. It's like it's pretty cool that the centipede has AOE physical defense and a heal on the weapon because you can essentially run him like as a dedicated full-time MDEF PDEF buffer, which is pretty cool, I think, for me personally. Um, so this is the team that actually I have two teams built. This is the first one and this is the second one right here. Now the difference between these teams is the healing potency of the other uh, players here. So if we look here at Tifa, she has a healing of 1400 and Matt or Zach is at 1000, right? Now these are very, very similar teams. The only thing I did here was I went into the sub weapons and I changed their sub weapons to give them better healing stats. So Tifa went from 1400 to 1900 and Zach went from 1000 to almost 1600. So I'm going to go into this fight. Um, and I think on the second one, this is the one where they have lower, where they have heightened healing potency on all of them, right? So what we're going to do is I'm just going to go into this fight. I'm going to cast one AOE heal with the defense stance at, at a uh, max. So I'm going to wait for it to get to max. And we're going to see how much Matt heals for right here. All right. So I'm just going to actually let's turn that back. All right. So we're just going to let that charge just to make sure we're getting the right thing here. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Almost there. And I'm going to switch it over right now. All right, so let's see what he heals for. 1,700, about 1,700 on each of them. Now I'm going to exit out of this right here. 
And we're going to go back. Now, I'm going to switch to the one where Tifa and Zack have lower healing potency. And if he heals them for less than 1700 something, we'll know that the centipede um, heals based off of their healing potency instead of his. Which I think would be a little strange, I'm not going to lie. Uh, so, let's see how it is. This is the other team right here. This is a regular built team. And let's give it a go. Alright, so I'm just going to let the stance gauge charge right here. We're going to take it to max. And we're going to see how it goes. I'm hoping that it... Uh, it... It... It's the normal way for healing. All right, so let's see here. And recovery circle. All right. Okay, so we healed for mid-1700s right there, which is exactly the same. Matt's setup didn't change at all. So we can confirm as of now that it is a typo on the banner. And matt's healing potency for the centipede is based on his own healing potency it has nothing to do with the healing potency of your other teammates which is a solid win for everyone now that being said i'm gonna go into this fight against very hard bahamut and i'm gonna test out this team i'm gonna give you guys a quick layover since this isn't a guide so here i have tifa she's just running the amaranth's guys amaranth claws and the lifeguard wraps i have somersault for the uh interrupts and the debuffs just three curas right there i have three elemental materials just for stat sticks then i have a d faith on tifa a d brave on zach and a runra blow base sigil so no uh x triangular circle here other than that i'll show you guys the different stats of everybody so here are tifa stats and that also this is an interesting comparison between the amaranth's claws and Zack's new weapon. So this is Amaron's Claws at OB9, dealing 630% physical non-elemental damage. It has the same P attack buff up high, right? In comparison to Zack's Ceremonial Sword, which has 840% physical non-elemental damage, also P attack can go to high, right? And so I'm going to be comparing kind of the two right here, um, except this Ceremonial Sword is at OB1, where the Amaron's Claws are at OB9. So pretty interesting they have similar stats tifa's at 10k 3.1k physical attack zach's at 8.8k and 3k physical attack so all in all pretty similar uh the sub equips here are just specking for physical attack um, i'll show you guys the r abilities real quick right here uh here is matt's setup he's at 7.4k hp as a full buffer i'm not really interested in uh, physical attack or magic attack but his healing stat is 2200 which is pretty damn good his sub equips back here are just the hell house caller fairy tale and the chocobo staff and then last but not least we have zach fair 8.8 khp 3k physical attack uh running murasame zidane's blade and the buster sword and yeah that's gonna do it all right guys so let's go into here and test out matt's centipede for the first time i'm super excited um, I haven't gotten the chance to really use it yet, and I'm excited to be running Zack alongside Tifa right here. The Amron's Claws was one of the coolest first crossover weapons, and I think that the game is finally catching up in regard to these kind of weapons being released that aren't limited. Alright, so here comes Bahamut's Unity Aura. Let's see here. I think I'm going to speed this up. And we'll debrave him. All right, let's go. I have Tifa here as kind of like a backup healer, just in case. And let's get some damage going. Okay, let's go. Man, I forgot how fast this moves. Okay, let's go. I'm going to slow this back down because it's kind of hard to see exactly everything that's going on and I kind of want to enjoy this fight with you guys. Alright, so I'm just going to take on Tifa right here. Looks like Tifa's hitting about 11.3k, whereas Zack is hitting, I couldn't quite see it right there. I'm going to remove this magic defense down with the amulet tribute here. And then 
I'm going to buff up our physical defense and give everyone a heal. It is pretty sick being able to do AoE, MDef up, and PDef up in the same round, actually. Um, Alright. Alright, so let's see Tifa's damage right here. She's hitting 13.8k. Let's go to Zach. Alright, so he's hitting 9.4k, so a little bit less. I don't think his uh, physical attack buff is that high, though. So let's see what he does here. Alright. 11.3k, so definitely better. I'm going to get us another heal with uh, Centipede right there. And hopefully we can take down this Mega Flare bar. Let's see. I'll block it on the one with the limit breaks. And let's get it. There we go. All right, so we're going to interrupt him, so he'll go into that again. It's pretty sick. I don't get to use Matt that often in the game, and I'm glad that they put something out. I am a little bit sad that it takes away from Barrett, um, but it is what it is, right? They're going to do what they're going to do. All right, so there is the Mega Flare canceled, hopefully. All right. There's the magic defense down. Oh, never mind. Here comes the Mega Flare. <laughs> I'm going to go with a dual onslaught with um, Zach. We're going to amulate tribute here. Hopefully, we'll get off another one. We'll see here in a second. Yeah, it looks like we will get off one more. All right, so we'll block this first Mega Flare. Such a sick animation. Not going to lie, it's so sick. All right, Tifa on the backup heals. I don't think you'll need Tifa on the backup heals once you get this weapon a little bit higher in healing potency. But it definitely helps right now. Alrighty, here comes the Unity Aura. Alright, so we're going to break these sigils. Tifa, what are you doing casting uh, No Mercy? Alright, I'll go for the Thundara Blow, and we should just break it in time. Alright, we're just going to go straight into the Limit Breaks right here. But it is definitely holding up, and the Bahamut fight is something that I think is a really good test of using Matt now. Especially if you run him with this build, which is like full uh, buffing build. It's pretty sick, actually. I think I'm going to do like a test video where I use Matt against EX1 Bahamut. Because um, I think that would be more of like a true test. That's a, that's a tough fight for sure. Alright, here we go. So Tifa still definitely has the upper hand on Zack right now. But then again, she is using OB9 Amron's Claws, so it does make sense. Alright, so here comes the Dive Bomb. Tifa will go No Mercy. Zack is going to Recovery Circle. And hopefully we'll get off one more of those. No, I don't think we will since he just cast it and we lost our buff. Uh, <laughs> hopefully he doesn't kill us right here. Oh my gosh, that was absolutely too close. Alright, we're going to get that heal from Tifa. And we'll get the recovery circle right here. Going into No Mercy, Ceremonial Slice. Alright, here comes the Dark Aura. And we're into the last countdown right here. But it is looking good. This fight isn't too bad, especially if you have all the right things. Alright, let me throw the somersault right here. And we should be able to take this bad boy down pretty quickly. Alright, looks like they're both at max physical attack. I really like Zack's animation for this sword, honestly. It's really cool. Alright, well there you guys have it. That was more of a chill video for today. Um, I've just been laying back here in Nicaragua. My new novel, Fade to Black, uh, The Curseborn Saga Book 1. It's a third edition remaster for a book series that's already had two publications. I just put out a 
new video where it, I'm basically reading the foreword of the novel, and it's an introdu introduction to the world of Curseborn. It talks about the different gods, life, death, and time, and the Saurian race, which are essentially like demigods. They're like half gods with the blood of dragons in their mythology night and day are two dragons that circle the cosmos and it's their people who protect the goddess of life from death himself and the story takes place on their world it's these two floating countries in the sky and it follows the adventures of these two brothers who are swordsmen essentially who dream of fighting and overcoming the strongest people that exist so there's a huge ensemble cast of characters, three orphaned princesses of the Empress, uh, the two brothers, an old swordsman, uh, a young thief girl, a uh, bunch of different deities and gods. It's it's a fun story. So if you guys want to check it out, there's a couple. There should be a link to that video, Introduction to the World of Curseborn, right up here in the corner. That being said, I hope this video helped you guys today. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Take care and peace. <laughs>